So if you press 5 to item mode, W, you'll see your center point or your pivot point is at the top of the uh, cushion. So what we need to do is go to geometry, no, I know this offhand, edit, center to bounding box, hence like bottom. So then it's bottom middle, okay? Um, and then just hit reset all. So now that's at zero, zero base. And what I'm gonna do is just move this up 0.5. So 0.5 meters, so 500 mil. There we go. Now, um, we've done a lot of direct modeling and uh, we're now going to introduce some sort of mesh up. Um, it's just far easier um, when you're dealing with curves to do this. So that's why I'm, I want to go into this method. Um, the old way before mesh ops um, was quite destructive. And if you wasn't happy with your curve, um, you had to rework it essentially. Um, and yeah, it's kind of pointless now. So what we're gonna do, um, if you've got your tabs open, select this icon here and you can then add an operator. So we need to go to a mesh layer, empty mesh layer. If you haven't got one, then no problem. Uh, if you're on cushion, press N. So N is add an item basically, and we're gonna add a mesh, which is gonna be empty. Okay. Now these arrows, click those. Uh, I don't wanna auto save. Um, and now we're in quad view. Um, quite handy. Um, go to snap in, um, alt click on that snapping tab and make sure you've got grid selected. Dead handy. Okay, so go to our create tab um, and we'll go to our Bezier curve. And in this view, basically, um, so there's probably a screw thread in the middle. So I just want a bit of wood to go through and then curve around. Um, in fact, I'm going to start it there because I offer more support. Single click, single click, click and drag, and do the same for here. Click and drag. Now we need to put this uh, a bottom base in, so I'm actually going to move up one. And let's move to here. Click and drag. Okay. So you'll probably get this messed up. Um, I won't worry about it. Three, mesh mode. Click your Bezier curve and then grab one of these handles. Holding shift down means that uh, the Bezier curve will react in a symmetrical way. And we're just gonna select this handle here, shift down and click. You see? So the old method is that you would have then swept a polygon. Um, I can't remember where it is. I think it's on duplicate with um, like a curve extrude. And then that's it, game over. Uh, just in top view, let's just move it to the center and turn snapping off. Right, we now to create single click on mesh and call it CRV, that's my abbreviation for curve. Um, and then N, mesh. This time we come to add operator, so empty mesh, add operator, and hopefully you'll see this. Uh, mesh operations and create a rectangle. Okay, now I drag the handles in, so the green and red. Now the thing is with this, we're now fully parametric, so if you was to let go of that, Go back to curve, for example. Deselect, go back to mesh. So click on rectangle. Excuse me, we're still live. So that's the sort of profile that I want to sweep around the curve. Probably a bit shorter. Yeah, let's try that. Right, so now we've got our rectangle, but we need to sweep it around this uh, curve. So add operator and um, 
you could scroll down and find it. But if you start typing C-U-R for curve, you'll then get curve related context um, feedback. Uh, so let's type curve. Okay. And there's lots of curves still there. Um, the other option is to type EXT for extrude and curve extrude is the one we'll have to. So double click, right? The path is curve, CRV, okay? And there we have our curve. We're gonna sub D this and we're gonna add loops to it. Um, edges, you can do it at this level, but I, that is getting a bit complicated. So essentially we're just doing this to allow us to, because I'm not happy with that curve, is to then modify it. Okay, so I want to create something more like this. No, I kind of like that as a finish. I put it, um, so if I bring the reference in, it's quite flat at the bottom and then rounded. So let's do that. So I grab these handles there and let's move this up, grab these handles in. Now I'm gonna go for quite a tight curve. And yeah, I think something like that will do for this purpose. <coughs> these are probably need to oh hold down shift on a point and the sort of sequence of points move with it, I think. Yeah, so holding shift on that point, which is very handy. Uh, discovered that by mistake, which is nice. And let's just move that one in a bit. If we use snapping, then you could get these verts lined up. But for this scenario, I'm not too fussed at the moment. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and relatively happy with that. Let's just move that a bit there, move that a bit. Yeah, that's much better. Nice curve, maybe just up a bit. Let's go with that. Okay, so your mesh item is done. Okay, now what we need to do is make a copy of that. So what we're gonna do is press through on your keyboard Double click the polys. Now the thing is with, um, so if I just select a few, I can't use any tools because it's a mesh op. Um, so you can't basically use destructive tools during that. So everything's got to be parametric, parametrically built. built. Sorry. <laughs> right, so what we're gonna do is make a copy. So double click, control C, press N for new mesh. Control V and paste it. Okay, so now this is going to be our um, foot stool base. And these items we want to hide, um, but we'll, what we can do here is Control G to make a group, single click, and call this master. I tend to use uppercase, and I will then go edit color red put that to the top and make sure it's not visible uh, so red really is my color in for master don't touch it you know um, so that's that right so we've made a copy of the polys and you might see this weird sort of artifact edging okay that's the i think it's curves that i've come across um, yeah, a bit, bit odd. Um, I'm not sure it used to do that. Um, so I'm just going to go geometry, mesh cleanup. Keep everything ticked. Okay, that. And I think that's done. Press tab and that's clean. Okay. So now we've got our sub D. Um, what we need to do is just on these edges, Alt-C and K, bring your tool properties up and 
and let's go for mode symmetry and just dial these down a bit so 10 percent on each side so you get a nice blocked off area and now down the middle let's just bring this in to something like that so 1460 percent because what we're going to do is create so i've just deselected that we're going to create a screw thread here okay so what we need to do is select those polys b for bevel just bring it in a small inset okay let's come out of uh, sub d mode for that so you can see it looks a bit odd um, and what we could do is widen this area um, so shift and a paro is uh, grow selection, shift down arrow is shrink selection. So shift at once, R, red handle, and just make it into a sort of square shape. We'll just make it a bit easier before we do a radial um, deformation. So deform tab, align tools and radial, click. And let's go shift up and do the same because uh, I've already got radial selected, click. That'll do me. Deselect. Tab. Select those inner ones. B. Blue hour up. And shift. Click. And blue hour up. It's lost its circle there. So select those polys. Shift up a couple of times. Radial again. Let's just bring this in. I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's move it up a bit. Tab. Move into that area. Select those inner polys. L. Move those up. Let's move them up a bit more. Okay. So if you fancy modeling a screw thread, then you could insert it into that area. But I think that's enough for that. Um, so yeah, if you want to do edits now, then I suggest you go back to your master and you go to your curve and then tweak and do the same process of freezing. Yeah, I'm rel relatively happy with what I've got there. Um, it's, it's close enough for this scenario. Um, we can still scale in if you feel you need to, but when you start scaling in that way, then you're gonna have problems. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna keep with that. So save that, and that's that part. Um, we're good. The next step will be to UV it, um, apply wood texture to it. And then the base section, um, let's pull this across. This base section, relatively easy. You can start with a cube, subdivide it, extrude it. Um, so have a go really. Um, oh, actually, just that bottom rounded bit. So now we're in this sub D mode and it's nothing really, it's not worth the hassle of doing it, trying to do it at a master level. Um, there's really, fun ways of doing curves in Modo 13. Um, but yeah, we're just getting into a different ball game. So um, on your footstool base, let's move it below cushion. Just grab those polys. W, translate, and just eke it out a bit. And now we'll get that sort of rounded corner. Um, you could spend a bit of time tweaking that. So come out of tab mode, um, sub D mode. Select those edges and those edges are, and just sort of, so the sort of, the polys are sort of equidistant tab, and then you've got your base curve. And that's what I'm gonna run with. Um, and that's it for this video, cheers. So the next part is the base. So I'm gonna create, click on footstool base, N, new mesh, 
So once you click on something, it'll, I think when you add a new mesh, it'll go below. Okay. Um, go to Model Tab, Create. Um, we're just going to throw a cube in. So hold Shift, Cube. There we have it. Three, two, Poly Mode, double click. R, the scale. And I'm just going to scale in that way. Um, I do mainly model from cubes and so on. So it's a, a workflow I'm quite happy with. Um, and I think it works in terms of like sub D's going back to UVs and so on. It's quite a good process. Um, in many packages, you might use splines a lot and you might get too much sort of dense information on your lofts and so on. So for me, it just works. And the reason why I want to use UV maps, I sometimes output to game engines. Um, so being able to um, lower your um, sub D counts from like three levels back to one to give you the low poly mesh, you can bake from the subdivision three to subdivision one. Um, and your UVs will all be intact. So there's a lot of benefits to doing that. But anyway, I'm uh, digressing a bit. So we're just gonna get on here. So tab, and that's no good. So what we need to do, is just add some edge loops. So Alt C, so um, poly select, so mode three, poly select, um, and select to adjacent, Alt C, and then we're going to pad out a bit. Same that way, Alt C, there we go. That's better. Press Tab, and what we can do is just double select those edges, R, translate in, and then what we're going to do is so middle mouse button. Um, and just drag around those areas and same there. So holding shift key down, middle mouse button, drag around those areas. There we go. Press R and we're just going to bring them in. So that's going to form our base. So tab. Okay, that's fine. Tab again to come out. Three adjacent polys, Alt C, cut. Right, so we're in symmetry mode. That's handy. Um, but let's go to uniform and up here, so move our tool properties, we can affect, sorry, not uniform, free. We can affect each curve. So I want this one to be the bottom, so it's going to sit on the floor. So I want a tight chamfer. So I'm going to go for something like night five. And at the top here, let's go for something like a 20. Tab. And that's not too bad. Tab back, uh, select that middle poly, shift up arrow. So I select that range. Uh, so it's grain selection, sorry. R, scale that in. Tab. And that isn't too bad. Maybe we just want to grab these edges. So holding shift down, you make your selections R and just tweak that in a bit. Okay. I think for the purpose of this video, I don't want to spend a lot of time refining. I just want to get stuff done. And I'm now about five minutes in. So let's get moving. So let's just say I'm going to F8 brings up my preview window. Um, I'm used to doing that. Whereas you've got it here. So bring it up here. And that's what we're going to run with for now. Okay. So the next part is this cube, you can rename it. But what I'm going to do is because I want to this cube and this C bend, I want to use the same UV maps. So double click the base there. Control X to cut, or Command X, I think, on the Mac. If 
put stall base, control V or command B. And now we've both got them in the same layer. Um, I'm going to hit save at this point and come to the UV map. Right, so that's already UV'd, but um, the wood texture that I'm going to supply uh, will not translate too well on that because I want to create this sort of wood seam effect um, or this lined effect around the top, um, this C bend and the base bend. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on. So I'm going to go to my shading tab. Uh, these two, double click, there's polys, M, make material, um, I'll just name it wood for now. Okay, um, and you'll have access to these, um, like desk JPEG, so just double click that. Right, you see this is UV'd, the C bend isn't yet, but that is something I'm not perfectly happy with, so I undo control space, perspective, shift A, and there we go. So again, shift A, it just automatically centers on selected object. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Right, need to approach this in a different way. So I'm just gonna select that middle poly, shift up, and let's go shift up again. Um, and then I'm gonna go control space and go to the top view. Shift A, and we're going to go to UV Edit, uh, Project from View. So we've covered this before in part two, I think, for the uh, the cushion. Um, and then let's go Perspective again. You can, um, in Poly Mode, H to hide it, and that's got rid of it from the UV area. And obviously it's hidden there, but that's fine for this purpose. So it's the bottom, shift up, shift up. Actually, no, I'm just going to go one set. Let's go one set for now. Um, if you do control A, that sort of puts you in bottom mode because it automatically centers on the object, but it also orients. Um, so project from view, shift H, I'm oh, sorry. Um, on hide is U, um, but I pressed the wrong key there. Actually, let's go for this section, L, shift up. Actually, we'll take this section as the, for the wood grain to follow around, shift H. So that hides unselected items. Now, I'm gonna unwrap this crudely. So select that edge to the bottom. So the bottom part of the mesh and make sure the loops join on the bottom and you do the same for the top and we're going to hit unwrap tool okay so a bit funky but what we're going to do is just like rectangle so now let's put in a rectangular grid and what we do is E, so sorry, double click the UV item, E, um, and just rotate, undo that. Sorry, hold down control first. Sorry, I'm used to using the uh, Cinema 4D and doing lots of this work and I have to rotate and then hold shift key down. Um, but in Modo it's control and click. So it'll snap every 15 degrees, I think, yeah. And there we have it. Free on hide. This time, uh, let's just do a pack, turn orient off, and keep it as is. And that is sort of fine. Now we need to do this section, so Shift H. Um, let's turn the stool off. So go to Scenes, Cushion. That's better. So we want to select the same sort of thing. We're going to unwrap it. Double click. Double click, double click, double click, double click. Same for the inter um, internal part. So your seam's gonna be around that edge. 
So you can have about six different objects. So I hope you can see that sort of pattern that I want to um, unwrap. Unwrap tool, click. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. So that's pretty straight. Now the C bend needs sorting out. So double click those, double click, shift, double click. And this time, rectangle. And now we have the grain following around the C. You may want to do it for these. So um, let's try orient pieces, uh, vertical maybe. Yeah, that's worked. So go for that, orient. UV mapping could be a bit trial and error. So just see how you get on. Pack, and keep it as is. Right, that's pretty cool. U to unhide, and again, now we want to refine this section. So select in that middle bit, shift up, shift up, W. Let's just translate this down a bit. Double click that item, UV relax. Ah, that's fine, that's what we can do. So it's relaxed these areas, top and bottom, but this is now gone again, so rectangle. Okay, and let's pack. So that's pretty cool. Now we just want to go to our shading tab and on the wood texture, you go to texture locator and you can change the repetition. So if you do two here, control enter will also affect the vertical wrap. Four, control enter. So now we've got a nice fine grain. This is a problem. Um, that probably needs a bit of a relax. So let's UV relax that. But instead, let's just iteration put it down to zero. Uh, boundary locked. And now just scroll up a bit on there. Keep going. Um, try adaptive. Oh, yeah, it's taken a little while. I might just get a bit more detail in that area. Let's just go back to 200. Yeah, it's not the best that area. Um, that's what you could do in this. Press L. And you could manually just Stretch that, then that's not too bad. So there are ways of fixing this. Uh, might be a bit manual process sometimes. Um, R, and then just eek that out a bit. And let's just move this, so double click the UV space, or UV island. Let's do the same for this, R. Oh, come to 15 minutes, so sorry about this. But you can see we're getting something half decent. Oh, on there. And let's, in fact, let's just do a pack. Right, three U. Nope, sorry. Turn, just turn cushion on. Okay. Um, and let's go to camera mode. And let's go to the UV and bring down this preview. And that's not too bad. Um, so click on your surface and now roughness, just bring that down to about 20%. Okay, just looking at this, this seems to have a clear coat on it. So it's got this rough sort of diffused wood surface but then it's got these uh, highlights that uh, are quite sharp on it. So what we need to do, because we're coming up to 16 minutes, we're just gonna call it there. And we'll go on to create, you know, a nicely rendered view. 
um, you may want to refine the base and everything. Um, it's a very chunky um, F9. And there's a quick preview or quick render. Quite noisy. Um, I suspect that's my HDR map, but um, we'll, uh, I'll have a think about that for the next video. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, cheers.